Hey, so welcome to podcast number six from the Cult Couch Crew. Uh, I'm Russ from Rec Media, and we're here with Phil, the other half of Rec Media. Hello. And John from Degenerate Gamers. Hey, hey. I always, I always really struggle to say degenerate. I don't know why. Like on any video that I've ever done where I've had to say it, I'm like degenerate gamers. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, we get a lot of people saying like, like especially if they don't see, don't see what I did with the. The word in the like de- degener degenerate <laughs> degener de- eight de- it's degenerate but that's cool. <laughs> uh, okay, Don't worry, so when I'm a massive yeah. superstar, everyone will know. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> cool. So uh, this this uh, episode, we're going to talk about the division. Obviously, the beta's just closed, sort of uh, last weekend. Uh, we did our live stream in it. We played it a bit, and we've all got our own impressions. Uh, and sort of off that, we're going to talk a little bit about the way that games and especially publishers seem to be marketing games in the wrong way and how they, they tend to almost outright lie to us about what the game is going to involve. And it's not until sort of the last three or four months of of the marketing and the actual getting to see gameplay footage that we get a true understanding of the game. So we're going to move into that. But uh, to start with, uh, guys, what were your impressions of The Division? Do you want to go first, Phil? Sorry, I, I got really distracted then. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> go on then. Ad- admit it on podcast. What distracted you? Yep, that's it now. Do it. Go for it. Terrible. Terrible. Oh, Get a lock on the door. Right. <laughs> sorry. But yeah, so, go on, Phil, what, what was your impression of The Division? Um, I think you know, there was nothing fundamentally wrong with it. Like, it was standard sort of formula. Um, like online role playing game, like you know, you you need to level up your gun to be able to do more damage, that sort of thing. So it's not as if it's one hit, one kill, or anything like that. And all the game mechanics, like as we've said, they were very kind of standard RPG. So there was nothing wrong with it, other than it was very standard. Like it didn't bring anything new to the table at all, from what I saw. And like everything was just a bit average. Like and as we said when we were playing it, we said quite a few times. Just it's just we've played it before. Like there is absolutely nothing new to it from what we could see. So just a bit of a letdown, really. Yeah, I see. I I think that graphically, I I liked it. I liked the scale and the scope of the game, Um, especially the weather mechanics. I was very impressed with that. But as Phil said, it's it might not be like a there might not be a direct comparison to the game in terms of something else that I've played. But I've definitely played parts of that game in lots of other games. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And for, for, the, for, some, for something that's been so hyped recently as well, and something that's been on the waiting list for a lot of gamers, I'm sure there's people out there that are going to absolutely love this game. And, you know, fair play to them. I've got absolutely no qualms with anyone enjoying anything. But for me... When I played the beta, I, w- I was captivated for the first two hours, I'd say, and that's been generous. And then after that, it started to sort of fade, and I started thinking, yeah, I can see where this is going. And to me, it just feels like it's going to be a bit shallow and a bit disappointing. Now, I might be completely wrong. When the game drops, uh, there might be features which we never could have expected happening, but from from my point of view, I think that's a bit of a long shot. Yeah, I think I'm, I'll have to agree with both of you. And I, the issue I had with it is, I think they're they're a bit too safe when when they were designing the game. They they didn't really. I don't think they were too experimental, and they've sort of just hit the same lines every other game hits. Um, and what they've sort of pushed out was the the teardrop engine, um, and how as you say, the weather effects and the sort of dynamic world with, um, you know, all the destruction and that sort of thing, and then drop in, drop out multiplayer, so it's all very seamless between areas, and, you know, you you very rarely see a a loading screen. Um, So I think they they sort of focus on making it technically impressive, um, but a lot of gamers don't really tend to notice that sort of stuff. most people would just see 
what a game for what it is they don't particularly appreciate the fact that they didn't have to load between this area and that area um but yeah i think for me gameplay wise they they just they've sort of hit a point where they're being way too safe with it and they haven't tried to do anything too experimental like i guess their idea of the dark zone is quite sort of unique but at the same time it, it's not that imaginative it's not, it's not, not beta, it's not no. that game breaking really to make make that sort of side of the game the way it is and to me that's the only part of the game that really looked like it had much replay to it the only reason you'd ever replay some of the story missions from what I saw in the beta was to get experience quicker which to me seems a bit weird because I don't really like running a story mission twice because it seems irrelevant at that point yeah I I think with it with it being the with it being the beta the, the conclusions that you draw from it are I mean, I mean, everything you've said is absolutely correct. I think, and I think the beta is a normally, especially as 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 close to the launch date as we are, it's as polished as it's going to get. Um, and I just, the dark zone for me, once I'd been in it for a little bit, I just thought, well, I can't see this being anything else than what I'm experiencing here. And I've just experienced it, so why would I come back? Okay, mm. it's a better loot, and I've seen images of. Uh, what a, a top flight agent looks like, and they just look like exactly the same to what your your level one agent looks like. There's no yeah. distinguishing features. I mean, I'm not saying that you should go and plaster gold gun skins on everything, you know. Or if people like that sort of thing, that's fine. But for, that doesn't for me that doesn't sig like signify you know that someone is a, of a high caliber of a game. Yeah. Um, I just. I thought when I first played that I'm going to enjoy just walking the streets and just being amongst the world, but the yeah. world's completely flat. In, well, it wasn't a beta. I mean, I haven't, I haven't even seen probably another 75% of the map, plus whatever DLCs and, like, ultimately in the works. But for me, what I saw was very flat, and the atmosphere didn't hold. Past my own excitement, once the excitement started to fade out, I started to get a little bit more critical. Um, the atmosphere just flattened out, and I just thought, wow. Yeah, I think as you say, like I really like the idea of just wandering the streets and sort of looting areas and being in a bit of a clan. You know, us three guys sort of going around, watching each other's backs and moving through the streets. But unless... Uh, the only thing that would sort of throw a bit of a spanner in the works of getting from A to B was just a, a bunch of enemies, which is no different to probably what you're running to B to go and do anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it'd be nice if you came across a few more situations where, I don't know, something like people were stuck in a burning building and you had to go in and try and help them out and just and it, little things like active, that. Active time events that you just stumble across. Random yeah. Yeah. And things like that, things that are a little bit more just just a bit more to it rather than just a couple of goons standing in the street or looters picking up a body that obviously need killing for some reason. Yeah, but I think I mean that's it, isn't it? They they do have the what they call an encounter, but all an encounter is is a dressed up way of explaining. Well, now you have to kill these people, and then you have yeah. to kill these people. There's no like it's what you're ultimately doing, it doesn't matter why you're doing it, what you're ultimately doing is the same thing over and over again. And that's, I think for me, that is the ultimate problem with the game, is that it doesn't matter what they dress up around the objective, the objective is go to this place and kill this person. Or, or pick this up and defend it for five seconds or ten seconds while people assault you, and then take yeah. it back to the person and they give you something and you move on to the next repetitive mission. Yeah. But even then, you know, it's like the ultimate aim there is, okay, fair enough, we're, we're defending this objective, but we're still just killing these people. And I don't know, I, well, I guess we, we need to sort of be careful where to draw lines, but we compared it a lot to Siege. Um, and you think about it, all, the, all Siege is, is trying to kill the other team. Yeah. But the way in which they've done it, in the, short, in the short, sharp matches that that is, and mm. the mechanics which they've built around that, that is fun to do over and over again. Yeah. All the division was was aim the cursor at the enemy and hold R2. They, were, they yeah. didn't feel like there's anything else to it apart from that, and I think that's where it really fell down. 
one of the things I was going to add is you were saying about how one of the things the division did quite well was kind of in the ideas and like the the you were saying like these kind of cool technology for like no loading screens and you know they were bringing in new ideas for that sort of thing yeah which is all cool and like the weather as well but it just it didn't have an effect on the game in any way it, like that was just a fancy loading screen really and then the weather again like I mean, there was that one bit where it got a little bit foggy, but again, it didn't really affect anything. We were still just running around shooting everyone. It's not as if we needed to change our tactics in any way because of the weather. No. And uh, with the comparison to Siege again, so if you think of Siege, like their main kind of uh, thing that they, the technological side of things they brought in was the destruction, which just completely changes every aspect of that game. If that yeah. game didn't have destruction, it, it just... Like, oh you know, no, but yeah, it, come on. The technology they brought in is a huge part of like the actual game mechanic, and it just makes such a huge difference. Yeah, Whereas I think that's Division a really good point. Done that. Yeah, so I think that, that's a really good point. Try, yeah. When you compare Siege and a game like The Division, in in the you know they're completely. When when you look at the at the the actual game itself, they, they they're like chalk and cheese. They're com- two completely different games, True. two completely different objectives. But they're both repetitive, and yet Rainbow Six wins. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, mm. I'm, obviously, we're not comparing that. We can't. You know, people, some, someone might say, "Oh, you can't compare them two games." Well, you can, because uh, Rainbow Six has one overarching objective, and uh, div- uh, the Division has several overarching objectives that are the same missions, but just you know, like you said, polished up differently. It's like Siege is a game that's designed to be repetitive. Exactly. And- Fun every time, whereas you would expect the division to be like a completely new, different experience. Like the whole, one of the the huge selling points is every agent has their story. Yeah, but there's no story there. Did, yeah, that did not happen in it's any bollocks. way. Everyone yeah. did the exact same stuff. Like it just no, it's not really. Yeah, I think as I said before that they tried to be too safe and that they've sort of got themselves stuck between a few different almost genres, like. They've gone for the RPG side of things, and the the problem is the whole story thing, as you say. Like every agent has a story. Feels like they've tried to capture a little bit of what Daisy and those sort of yes. team survival games put in together. To but me, the thing is with Daisy is the only way you can truly get an agent story, I think, or amazing player stories, is when you have permadeath or some ultimate penalty of, of yeah. getting killed, it makes surviving a lot more tense. And I think I'd love to see a version of The Division where it's almost like a hardcore mode where you have a player, you create your character, you go into the city, and that's it. If you die, you die. You have to start again with a new yeah. character. And I reckon that would completely change the way the game plays, and it would make people... A, the streets would be dangerous and, and all that sort of stuff, and I think I, I'd really like to see that version. I feel I feel that Destiny and Watch Dogs had a bastard child, and it was the division. That's how yeah. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, that's it. That's that's the way that's the way I see it, personally. I mean, the the mechanics of the the, the RPG mechanics of Destiny with the um, sort of open world third person mechanics of the Watch Dogs. With the disappointment of both of them, and I think you've got the division. That's, that is my opinion. <laughs> on, on, the, on the beta, on the, on the, on the, I can only say it about the beta because it's all I've played. Um, but I'm pretty certain that I don't think I'm too far off the mark on this one for me personally. Yeah, I think as you say, they've got to the point now where it's way too late to have changed anything off the beta. The only thing that I've seen they've done is basically resolved loads of. Um, loads of issues, you know, loads of, of bugs and things, but in terms of actually tweaking gameplay and changing story missions, like, that's not going to happen now. No, it's no, way no. too late. Absolutely. So, I think even though we did play the beta, it's a fair assumption. Unless they made did a horrible job of showing us what's in the game, mm. I feel like the game is just going to be those missions over and over again. Well, of course, you've got to remember as well that the areas so, of the city... Uh, one bit can... of news that... <laughs> Picked up. John was talking. <laughs> Can you hear me, Russ? John was like mid-sentence. He just started talking over. Oh, it. sorry. 
I think I think it cut out. I cut out because there was a bit of silence. I tried to fill it. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> Carry on, John. <laughs> Am I there? Hello? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Ross, can you hear me? Yeah, go on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Technical difficulties. Anyway, I was basically saying as a last point is when even when the, the, the game actually drops, the areas of the city are going to be level specific. So the first area that you're going to play is what you played in the beta. And you can't go exploring around the city because you might go into like a level 30 zone and you'll just get killed instantly. So you, the game ties you to one area until you actually grind through and get yourself in a position to carry on. And it, that to me just... That's, that's a little bit too grindy, a little bit, and that's that's very RPG standard, like as as a standard. Um, but I don't think that works with the whole shooter mechanics because unloading entire clips into a guy's head and not seeing him fall is probably the most, uh, I don't know, frustrating. Frustra- yeah, frustrating thing because you're just thinking, oh, this look, this guy, like, what is he made out of? Like it doesn't yeah. with Destiny that was fine because it was aliens and it was alien weapons and you don't know how much damage they really did and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. You know when you're putting a, a you know a, a carbine fucking seven point six two clip into someone's head and is just laughing at you and you know shooting you with a pistol and you die once it's I think it breaks immersion. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, so like obviously it is the beta and. I, I, one thing I'm hoping they can do between the beta and this is like, I'm hoping that the beta didn't contain every kind of sub quest and like you know the kind of extra activities you can do. I'm hoping it only had like two or three out of a collection. So like, if it had more kind of, as we were saying, like if it had like hostage uh, situations and stuff. So maybe like I'm just hoping that the beta was just a percentage of the things that could happen. I think if it was, then maybe it's not so bad as we think it is, and it's just, as you were saying earlier, us, that it might just be they've done a bad job of showing us what's in the game. But I think that's pretty much the only thing they can do to redeem themselves. Um, so based, like, what, how else do you think they can actually redeem themselves at this point? I think the problem for me is, even if there is sort of, you know, 20 more different types of encounter that we haven't seen yet. I still can't help but feel that every encounter is going to be based around going to this point and just killing other bad guys that are there. You know, I don't feel like there's enough in the game's mechanics that will allow it to do anything else but that. I guess there's something, an argument to be had that pretty much every game with a gun in that is all you do really. (laughs) Like, if you think about Fallout, every single thing you do in Fallout well, in fact, that's a bad idea, actually. Yeah. yeah. Bad example, I mean. Um, but, you know, lots of games, like, that kind of is all there is to it. But Yeah, and I, and I think that's fine if they're all... If if the only thing to it is going to this point and killing all the enemies, you have to make that fun. Yes. Not, as John just sort of pointed out, not get to an area, unload a clip in a guy, and then he finally goes yeah. down. Or get to an area and just stand there, aim the cursor at everyone and hold R2 until they die sort of thing. It yeah. there wasn't yeah. anything around it that felt fun. Like the cover system was kinda cool. But it's I think new. it's John mentioned in the stream. It's exactly the same as Gears of War. Yeah, you and know, Rainbow War. and obviously Rainbow the Rainbow Six series. The original yeah. like Vegas and that, yeah. Like it didn't feel like even the cover system was it was just safe. You know, everything about it was just safe. Um I felt I felt that it wasn't a true representation to to the gameplay videos that I've seen. Yeah, well, I think so. We can just segue into that one bit of news I was going to say before um, that I saw and tweeted about was the the beta phase um, broke a record for the amount of players playing it. Um, so they had 6.4 million players playing the division beta, um, which is a record for a new IP. I'm assuming things like Call of Duty, if they uh, do a beta, obviously was, they're going to have a lot more. Yeah, I was just about to say, sure, I'm sure GTA beat it. But... Yeah, but because it, it's a new IP. So I think that's still, no matter what comes of the division and what people think, I think the way they marketed it has been successful. To get 6.4 million people playing a beta, even though it was a free beta, mm. I still think that's quite an achievement. I yeah I think if it wasn't free, I don't think they'd get that. No. Um, no. But 
the, the, the division's been on the cards a long time, and it's been pushed back several, well, a few, you know, quite a few times. And it's been a very highly anticipated game since it was ever first revealed. Uh, well, since we ever saw that pre-alpha footage E3 video in 2000, what, 14? Yeah, in, two, in, in 2014. And, I mean, I, I know when I first saw that video, I was hyped from the start. I was like, that looks awesome. I can't wait to see what this has got in store. And again, I was the same with, with Watch Dogs, and I was like, yes, this looks so good. It looks like it's going to be so amazing, because everything that I see points to the fact it's going gonna, it's gonna to be amazing. But when the game comes out, like Watch Dogs, and like Assassin's Creed Unity, and do you know what, funnily enough, I keep, I keep mentioning Ubisoft games, like Rainbow Six Siege. Rainbow Six Siege, luckily, is still an incredible game, even though their E3 footage shows it as a completely different uh quality of game. Like, yeah. you know, the E3 footage shows um, uh, hostages saying, help help me, when you, when you pull up with the, the little drones, that, like, you know, the, looks like there's actually, that they're scared and it's a thing, and it's just, it's not real, it doesn't happen in the game. It doesn't even happen in the PC version, the highest spec version. It's not real. They're showing you something that's kind of real, but it's not going to be as good as what you're shown. And it, I think it's an Ubisoft thing, because there's not other... There's not, there is other game, there is other like publishers and developers that do it, but so far, you, uh, Watch Dogs, in my opinion, was good, but it flopped. Uh, Assassin's Creed Unity, that was crap, bag of shit, and uh, it's just it just seems to be a running theme that they show you more than than what's actually on the cards, and I don't like it. I'm I'm starting to get. I'm starting to get to the point where I don't want to watch E3 anymore because I'm just going to get hyped up for something that's not real. So, I mean, do you think then that they're deliberately out to sort of not not necessarily lie to us, but they they oversell themselves, knowing that that's going to drag the crowds in and just get that initial attention? It's sort absolutely. of like the first impression, isn't it? So, yeah, absolutely. Do you think they deliberately yes oversell it? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do, yeah. I think, I think, because once they've once they've got the initial interest, people will follow it. They'll follow the twitters. They'll follow the all the hype. They'll be able to get on the hype and uh, the hype train, and they'll they'll start pre-ordering because this looks so good. And they'll they'll just be putting out little tidbits of information, and there might be a closed beta, and like there has been in this. And but when it comes down to it, when this isn't the first time this has happened. Yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> So, I want. I wanted to. Lo- I wanted to love this game. It's not that I'm hating on this game. I wanted to love it. I wanted to embrace it as a brand new game, a brand new idea with with fresh, uh, fresh gameplay, fresh uh, ideas, fresh fun, a lot, everything. I wanted to be in this so badly, and then and and now I just don't. Now I'm just thinking, well, I'll just I'll play. So I'll, I'll I'll probably get it at some point. You know, I'm not saying I'm I'm, I'm gonna. Boycott it. I'm not that much of a. I'm not. I'm not hating on it that much. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely not going to get it at launch. I probably. I might. I might get it when the season's pass is cheap and I can get all the content in one go and after all the updates and all the adjustments and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, sort of just going back to the miss selling then. Um, do you think they should get away with it, or I mean, do you think there should be some form of almost penalty for them? Because imagine if. Coke were bringing out a new drink and they they sold it in this way and it had all these things they, they sort of didn't directly say it was going to do but they made this marketing campaign that quite clearly Insinuated. made it obvious this, this yeah. drink was going to do this certain thing it was going to make you fly you know it was going to do this that or the other stuff that's believable maybe that wasn't a good example but a bit like Red Bull no Red Bull yeah well, as soon as I thought that I was like well if someone already does that but, um, but yeah I mean, do you think there should be some, almost like a, a fine, or if, because I'm, it, the point I'm making is, there must be laws against other products doing that sort of thing. Imagine a film, if, if you watched a trailer for a film, and it had Leonardo DiCaprio in the trailer, and he was, like, playing this amazing detective role, and then you go and watch the film, and it's it's me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm the lead <laughs> cast of the film. People are going to be annoyed and want their money back. And do you not yeah. think gamers are entitled to the same sort of opinion? Think, That's quite well, a good way of putting it. What do you feel? You feel this one? So, 
I, I agree. I, I was going to say, like, I feel like really it's just a sales tactic and like lots of companies do it. Not, it's not just a thing that happens in the games industry, but as soon as you added that example, like, I kind of, like, that's, that's a really good example of probably why why it really is quite a bad thing to do. Mm-hmm. But I think as long as, like, as, at E3, as you were saying, John, like, if they're kind of clear that it's not, the final representation of a game and I know that, that that's still kind of like oh it's not quite the final representation but like as long as they're clear that you know it is that's the thing though they never say that it's scripted but no. a lot of the time you can just kind of tell but um the gameplay suggests that it's not though the division yeah. E3 gameplay suggested it was all off the cuff it was all happening yeah. right you, you were patrolling you were patrolling the streets or whatever and this happened, then all of a sudden these guys came out and your tango's on the roof, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, and then, hey, let's, like, okay, let's get this, let's get this uh, package away, the guy, you know, yeah. and it all it all looked like it was just, like, a this unfolding, epic, like, sprawling story that was just laying out in front of you. Yeah. Same, on Rain- same on Rainbow Six. You know, you see you see the, the terrorists, um, well, actually, uh, sorry, you see the uh, counter-terrorists, Trying to like keep the hostage safe, and then you know all the, all this sort of stuff. Or no, sorry, it was the opposite way around. You see the assault people trying to get the 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 hostage, and it was all sort of scripted, and it was all like, "Yep, I'm on the roof. Yep, Roger that." And and like that that doesn't happen. That's not real. Yeah, the the, the problem is though, like with big events like E3, like it is a presentation. It's not as if they can just kind of go, oh, let's like just play the game for a bit. It'll be fine. Like, it has to be scripted. Pretty much every single kind of game footage you will see at events like E3, they're gonna be scripted. You know, like you might have the odd one where it's like because of the style of game, they know no matter what happens, like it's gonna look good. Yeah. But ninety nine percent of the they, time. But why are they there? Sorry. Why are they there? Why do they go to E3? To sell games. Exactly. Not, yeah, so th- they need it to look the best that it possibly can. So but when the game comes, scripted, but when then... the game comes out and it's a baggage and it's nothing like it, and people are saying, "Well, that's not what I saw." But it, it's just a sales tactic at the end of the day, isn't it? Oh, of course. But, oh, definitely. Yeah. An, an example of so you were saying there's other games have done it before. Um, there's the Last of Us E3 trailer, which. That, again, that was absolutely scripted, and everyone was saying like, "Oh, that that was obviously scripted." But when it came to playing the game, that did actually play exactly yes. how that trailer showed it. Yeah. So like to me, that is the perf. Like that's fine. I'm okay with that. And um, you know, with Siege, like obviously it was playing up a bit, like she was in front of the camera, as you say. But you know, that was. I don't really care about that so much. But, but it's that's, when that's because, but that's because the game still happened to be completely, in exactly. in our opinion, anyway. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. You know, it's just how, how better would it have been had it if you if you had that sort of immersion? Because that's what we're talking about here. I think at the end of the day, the game, the, these E3 uh, and these trailers that are put out that, that are sh- uh, apparently show gameplay, they're showing deep immersion. In games, they're showing feeling and they're showing um, emotional investment in in a game. That, that's the way I see it. Anyway, that's definitely the way I saw the division. And when I played it, like you said, um, every agent has a story. Well, my agent couldn't even fucking speak. Emotional investment in, in a game. Yeah. Where well, my parrot? Sorry, <laughs> my laptop decided to start talking. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm I'm fine with it as long as I'm not being sold Leonardo DiCaprio and being given Russ. Like I'm, I'm kind of okay with it generally. Like I I, I understand that they need to do those sort of things because they like they can't sell it otherwise. Right. But it, yeah. down, down to Russ's question, do you think there should be some sort of um, uh, recompense for this? Or do you think there should should be some sort of it depends. If it's like an outright lie, like I, again, I don't think game. I, I think gamers are getting wiser, and I think this sort of thing—you won't see this thing in another two or three years. Yeah. Well, the same as I said, you, you like most people. They surely they understand that it is scripted because it has to be. They can't not. They can't just go on stage and be like, "Here's this game." Like, you but know, they do. The game could crash. All this shit could happen. But they like, do. But that's what that, that is what they yeah. do. That's, that's the problem. 
But I don't yeah. think it, I don't think it will carry on. In my personal opinion, I don't think there should be any sort of like lawsuits, or whatever. You either you think you make your own opinions, you either buy the game or you don't. Yeah. But the publishers and the developers have to realise that pretty soon a new a new type of game will come out. Let's just say in Division Two, for example, and pe- and gamers will get smart and say, "No, nah, it's just hype. It's not going to yeah. be that good." It's not yeah. going to be that good, and that, and then they won't pre-order it. Yeah, well, I think if you're silly enough to fall for it, then it's kind of your own fault. It's like the I fell, I fell for saying, the division again. <laughs> well, yeah, I the, fell um, for it. the division um, YouTube, the the live, um, what, what are they called the the origin the stories. Action. Yeah, the live action videos. That so good. So They're amazing, good. but there were people commenting saying, "Oh, I've, I've pre-ordered the game just because of this video. It looks yeah. amazing." Like, why? Who makes the decision based on a live-action trailer of what a game is going to be like? Like, it's people like that who are going to fall for these kind of sales tactics. So I as long thought, as you're wise enough to kind of, I understand kind of yourself. did for The Witcher. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I didn't pre-order it. I never pre-ordered it. <laughs> the, the, the thing with The Witcher is, I don't know if you played the other two, but that was already an established IP. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You had a you had a point of reference, but with the division, you don't you, you mm. don't know about it. So you, you get these, I mean, acclaimed filmmakers, Corridor Digital, Rocket Jump, Devin Supertramp, making these films that all obviously have their own touch on it. The Devin Supertramp one had a bit of parkour in it. The Rocket Jump one was funny. Um, the Corridor Digital one was sort of super slick, cool action scenes. Mm-hmm. So. They're not necess- they're, rep- they're, they're films about the game, but they're done in their the filmmaker style, not necessarily portraying the game in in the way it is. If you watched the Rocket Jump one and thought, "Oh, the Division's a comedy. It's going to be a funny a funny game." Do you know what I mean? It, it's those <laughs> live action films don't necessarily portray it the way it's supposed to be portrayed. But I think I quite like that because it it's just this sort of mis- this mash together of of two mediums, but but they do I, feed the I hype. Really like them. I just, and I think they added to the hype. And I think we're on, we're, like, ever since um, there's been several games, well, I say several, there's been AAA games over the last um, sort of, I don't know, 18 months to almost to two years now, which have out hyped themselves. And. They've, the developers have made the money off the off the hype. It's like an it's like a new it's like a new way of, of you know Destiny was the most pre ordered game ever. You know, and then when it when it dropped people were disappointed. And I think the problem the problem that developers have to understand is that hype if your if your game does not live up to the hype that you're generating, you're always gonna fail. You're gonna have your die hard fans that would literally fucking sleep with the game if they could. Um, but the rest, but the rest of the the rest of the gaming community, I I'm in fact I'm gonna put I'm gonna put out um, John's mega prediction for podcast number six. I reckon that the division is gonna get a seven out of ten averaged across the board. Yeah. And that's the because that's the way I feel about it. And I think uh, some of the more harsher reviewers will give it a five or a six. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be as successful as Ubisoft maybe hope. No. It, it might initially appear to be of being successful. It might even score a few tens for certain um, critics, but I don't think it's going to last long into 2017. It'll, it'll be replaced pretty quick with something else. Yeah. How about from? Yeah. It, it, it'll <laughs> just lose its appeal. And as you say, if anyone then jumps into it and goes into the dark zone, it's just going to be filled with people who've played it since day one, and they're just yeah. going to be these super characters that no one can compete against. So. Exactly, yeah. But yeah. Okay, um, so I think we've, we've sort of covered all the, the, the topics around that. Uh, we've just sort of bashed on the division for the last 40 minutes. So um, I think we'll move on to a little bit of news, because there's something I want to discuss with the news uh, in a little bit of detail. Um We'll cover the first couple of things I've got noted down. So the PlayStation Plus games, have you guys seen them for for March? Yeah, I had a quick peek. Yeah, they're looking they're looking quite good. So I'm assuming Broforce won the vote. Broforce won the vote, yeah. yeah. So that, that looks like it's going to be a cool game. Um, I'm going to put out a what is video for that 
um, sort of hopefully day one when that comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little bit underwhelming though. I, I still feel like they they've lost their way a little bit with PlayStation Plus, and we yeah. used to get some some cracking sort of AAA titles every so often, but I feel like I haven't really had a, a feel of a, a really really you know a, a great game for a while. They've, they've sort of just been average. There's which nothing, is there's nothing, not no, there's nothing notable, is there? Yeah, I'm not complaining about free games, and it's always nice to get games I've not heard of or haven't played before. What did so they say? Least... What did they say when uh, they announced PlayStation Plus? What did they say about giving away AAA titles? There was a thing that it wasn't just. They, they said like they were going to give X amount away every every year or something. Yeah, did, I think. Did that, did that encompass? PlayStation 3 as well. Yeah, well the thing is, so PlayStation Plus has been running for a lot longer than the PS4 has. Um, mm. A lot of people don't necessarily realise because they've only now adopted it because they have to for the multiplayer. But I've been on PlayStation Plus since pretty much day one um, just for the discounts and little things. And then they announced to doing the free games thing. And because I was already on PlayStation Plus, I thought, great, I'm going to start getting free games. Um, and this was, you know, for a while on PS3, there were I think the first one I got was this Warhammer Space Marine game, and that was really—I mean, I really enjoyed that. I'm quite a big Warhammer nerd, so that was really good fun. But I think, and o- over the time they've released these sort of AAA titles and, and got to a point where there was pretty good games coming out, or if there was a sequel about to come out, you could pretty much guarantee you were going to get the first one. Um, yeah. But then the problem is sort of, to sort of wet your appetite for the. So you go go ahead and buy the next one. Yeah, exactly. It's in the developer's best interest and Sony's best interest to sort of give away the older one to then sort of build up a bit of hype for the new one. Yeah. But the thing is, the PS4 came out, and I think they they sort of got stuck when games start to be for sort of like fifty five, sixty quid to download digitally, mm-hmm. and they couldn't necessarily be given away that amount of money if they knew that people could buy this game for sixty quid. They didn't really want to just give that away. Yeah, yeah. So I think they've sort of been stung a little bit with the PS4 coming out and the price of digital games and them sort of pinning their hopes on, obviously making money off that. So we are getting a lot of the indie titles, which is fine. You know, I think it's it's good and it helps build up these smaller studios and explores games that we... Yeah, that's what I was, that was, what I was saying. One good thing about PS Plus is that... Um, it, it comes up with these little gems every now and then. I mean, one of them is the the, bait, the Hitman bait that everyone's just played. If you're a PS Plus member, I think it's on like the 5th of March, just before the other one releases, they're opening up the beta for PS Plus members only. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I like it when PS Plus does things, not necessarily free games, but they just give certain things away. Or yeah. I mean, sometimes the discounts in the store are really good as well. So mm. a game might be half price, but PS Plus will get like a 65 75% discount on it. Yeah, yeah. Which makes it, you know, a 15 quid game goes right down to like 250 or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like it's you can cool. actually kind of make the money back that you're paying to get PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Just by by getting the discounts. Yeah, yeah. Or just the free games alone. Like if you were to buy all those games, it would cost you know hundreds yeah, of pounds. So it's pretty good. Um, so so you, can they, start, you can start throwing spanners at people now, Russ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. So uh, one thing, um, I think you you put a, a highlight stream out of you, John, a highlight video of hit the Hitman beta. Hitman. Yeah. yeah. No, I actually, I actually posted the the entire live stream of my impressions as a long-serving Hitman fan, um, and going forward, I think I'm I'm not so sure about how the episodic thing's gonna work. Well, I, I mean, I understand how episodic works, but um, I can on, I can honestly say uh, as a uh, a Hitman fan from the very beginning that it has gone back to exactly what made that game so great. Um, and just by playing the two missions of the beta, I know 100% that I'm going to purchase that game, and it's going to be it's going to be incredible. And you can throw wrenches at your heart's content. And yeah, and you can you can you can throw random items at people, and <laughs> and it's really it's fun. <laughs> um, so another bit of news, it sort of came up last night. I've not actually watched it yet, but um, Uncharted or Naughty Dog released a new cinematic trailer for Uncharted 4, which comes out next month. 
Um, it's a story trailer, and I think it's sort of a bit more giving you who these new characters are and sort of learning a bit more about old Drake and mm-hmm. sort of what he's done in between the games. But in the background of the scene, so the, the screenshot of scene is Drake and someone, or Nate and someone, sitting on a sofa, and in the background on the wall is a piece of art, and it's a cove, and it's like a beach, you know, with a big rocky cove, and it's apparently it's a piece of art straight from Assassin's Creed 4 that they, whoever designed that that room, the artist, obviously took it from Google or took it from some some repository, and it turns out that that scene and that piece of art is actually in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Um, so the lady who markets Assassin's Creed noticed it, got straight in touch, and they've they've changed the art in the trailer, and they've sort of re-released it and apologised. But I just I just find that really funny how how that can happen. Yeah, it's someone's getting fired. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess it's not necessarily. If it was a picture of an assassin standing there or something, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, you could easily mistake it for sort of just a generic piece of art. But yeah, I just I just find it amusing how I wonder how many people watching the this new Uncharted trailer saw it and was like, "Hey, isn't that whatever <laughs> like yeah. you know, Black Flag Cove or whatever it's called?" How um, does that even happen? I don't know. I I don't know. It's quite funny when you see the picture and then you see the screenshot of it in the Uncharted trailer. It's just like in the background, and it looks so out of place. Just like this, it's it's like they're in a, a nice. A library sort of room with a roaring fire, and it's like an English country room, just with this like black flag beach and cove art, like art in the background. It just looks so out of place. But yeah, I find it really funny. It happens when someone goes, "Oh, just Google it; it'll be fine." The words that can happen. <laughs> yeah. I found it's, this on Wikipedia. It's like the time um, I think it was a news report, and they needed to get a. Uh, Sort of like it was in America, and you know how in the top corner they have like an, an image while they're doing the news. Yeah. They needed an image for like United Nations, and someone had obviously just Googled like, well, whatever. And uh, they'd got the UNCF or whatever it is from Halo, like the <laughs> Halo people. Yeah, I remember that. So he was like reading the news about like this, this sort of world crisis just with like the Halo thing at the side. It's hilarious. The other classic one was the the news article where they were on about um, it was like somewhere was some country was firing missiles into another country as they always do um, but the, the the footage that they played was from Armour oh yeah they, they had a Armour 2 but it was like quite pixelated and really clearly from a game like firing these missiles and it was somehow ended up in a friggin news article I think I what just recently done hasn't Iran just recently posted yeah. pictures of of a call of apparently like this sniper taking out IS fighters and it was from like Modern Warfare 2 <laughs> <laughs> yeah Seriously? It, it's so dumb like <laughs> <clears throat> the one that Phil was on about was basically there was footage of this helicopter crashing and oh, that I think someone, it. some news group got on top of it and then a terrorist cell or organisation heard about it and they claimed that they'd done it and then it all exploded from that of like, oh, like this terrorist group shoot down Russian helicopter or whatever and then it, everyone, like, all the nerds on the internet are like, that's totally armour too, like what is wrong with you? <laughs> So bad. Um, awesome. Okay, and then the sort of the last little bit of news uh, I wanted to pick up on was the leaked um, notes about the survival mode coming to Fallout 4, and basically Bethesda have come out this week and said, "Yeah, that's true." Like, someone leaked, found the files in the game on PC, and they've come out now and confirmed that they're legit. Um, so just to read through a couple of things that are going to change. So if you want to play Fallout 4 in survival mode, you're basically manual and quick saving is going to be disabled. So you'd have to find a bed to sleep to save. Combat's more lethal, so you take more damage but also deal more damage. Fast travel's disabled, so you have to walk everywhere. Nice. Ammo has weight, so you can't just hoard an unbelievable amount of ammo. Um, enemies don't appear on the compass anymore. You can become ill, 
and fatigued, so you have to look after yourself and eat and drink regularly. You get fatigued, so it's like radiation, but it works on your action points. So if you've got too much fatigue, it eats into the amount of action points you can have. Um, sickness, so you, you get you have like an immune system, so if you're too cold or eat uncooked meat or take damage from something like a rat, you'll start to sort of get ill effects of, of being ill. Um, bed types, so there's sleeping bags you can't sleep in for very long, which affects how obviously how much you rest. Um, all sorts of stuff. So it sounds like... Oh, if, awesome. Yeah, if you've played Fallout and you've, you've sort of ex gone through the entire game and you're bored of it now, I would say playing it in survival mode, it's going to be a completely different experience. Yeah. So that's really cool. I'm quite looking forward to, to getting that. I'm not sure if it comes as part of a DLC or if it's a free update, but that's going to be really cool. Well, it adds an actual use for the vertibirds, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. Because so far I've not been able to think of any reason why you'd ever bother with it. But but no, um, in Fallout New Vegas it did have a, a similar mode. Like it was a bit a lot more basic than that, but it was you needed to eat to survive. Um, you needed to sleep, and I don't think there was much more to it than that. And just that alone made such a difference the way you played that game and I re I enjoyed it a lot more because it added so much more challenge to it and like that yeah. little bit more um, like it, that tiny bit of realism obviously it's not quite real but you know it's that much more immersive that's what I'm after um, so the sounds of that that sounds amazing that sounds like exactly what I want out of Fallout sounds like, like a new game personally yeah oh yeah. man that, that's like the best thing I've heard in a long time. I, yeah. I really like the sound of that. So that's going to be cool. That's going to give you a reason to play it in a whole new way. So I think that's that's something that's exciting and certainly worth worth looking out for. Um, okay, so anyone else want to get anything else out off their chest before we, before we wrap up? Um, new Battlefront update's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've still got um, a chance to play it. Check that out. Brighty got a brand new, a brand new map called the Twilight of Hoth, and it is incredible. If you haven't played it yet, you need to, you need to play that game. You need, to, you need to play that map. Definitely. <laughs> and if you haven't played Siege yet, you need to play Siege because Siege is amazing. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop thinking about Siege when I'm at work. Like, I just, I've got to play it like all the time. I'm off all day tomorrow, so you can watch me on stream. Uh yeah, we've got clients in at work, but once they're gone, I'll, <laughs> they're I'll just <laughs> I'll just whack the stream up. That's fine. <laughs> cool. Okay, so uh, I think we'll wrap it up there before the stream explodes once again. Um, so uh, thanks for listening. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the podcast, and be sure to like and subscribe us here at Rec Media for more gaming content and live streams. Uh, John. Yeah, and the same for me at Degenerate Gamers on Twitter. And Degenerate Game is on YouTube for regular content and weekly streams. Cool. So, see you later. Def make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.